Uh, I'm Christoph. I'm presenting joint work with Ross Horne, Tobias Käfer, and Shoko Moore on SSI from specification to protocol, formally verify security. So this is what we are going to talk about today. So first, we will talk about what are self-sovereign identities, what are related specifications, web standards there are, and can you actually use them to derive a formal protocol for authentication? Then we will present our methodology to which we apply to do that, and then formally verify the security of that protocol. Our contributions uh, I will highlight while we go through the talk. So what is self-sovereign identity? It is a decentralized identity management paradigm where the idea is that the user is in control of their digital identity. So imagine a student at some university. The student has issued a digital student ID card. The student controls their ID card on their wallet, on their phone, for example, oh. and can use that ID card to one. present it to some verifier. Imagine GitHub Education, right? So when they present the student ID card, they, uh, this will be verified. The GitHub Education will check with the university that, yes, it was signed by this university, and then they will uh, get access to all the services for GitHub Education. To achieve something like this, there are 10 principles of SSI that should be adhered to, and these have been popularized by Christopher Allen. And when we look at the security of such ideas, we directly want to distill like formal security properties from these uh, principles. So let's do some cherry picking here. For example, there's the uh, principle of control that says a user should control which information is kept secret and which is revealed. So this directly translates to, okay, we want to have secrecy and we want to have authentication, meaning authentication is the context in which data is revealed, that is, to whom it is revealed. Another principle would be persistence. Identities must be long-lived. So persistence means for us, well, it desires forward secrecy. Minimization desires non-correlatability, that is, unlinkability. But here they also say, okay, maybe this is really hard to achieve, and we also see that. And then finally, protection from potential interference by a third party to ensure the rights of the user. While this is really meaning the rights of the user, it hints at unlinkability, it hints at forward secrecy, and it hints at authentication and agreement is actually mentioned uh, explicitly in this principle. So this is what the self-sovereign identities are, the users in control of the digital identities, and for people implementing systems, uh, they have started to write specifications, web standards, and as software engineers do, they like to layer things. So they start by identifying the agents. What is the identifier for an agent? Well, there is this W3C decentralized identifier specification that just says, use this URI to identify an agent. Now we want to make assertions about an agent. Say, this agent is a student. For that, we have the W3C verifiable credentials data model, where you can say, OK, he's a student signed by the university. When you want to issue, transmit, and present such credentials, there are message, message exchange protocols, for example, by the Hyperledger Ares community. And then finally, as an outer layer for the security, there is uh, cryptographic envelopes, according to the DITCOM messaging methodology, which basically says, well, encrypt and sign stuff if you want. So these are the common layers for this, uh, the SSI. Uh, and the big problem here is, well, they are layers, and the standardization is going on mostly in separate efforts. So while this is common in software engineering, uh, this layered thinking may lead to security risks. 
So can you derive a protocol from the specification? Yes, indeed, you very well may. But you don't have any guarantees about the security properties of the protocol that you just derive from the specifications that are being written. So for example, don't look at the details. Here, this protocol, or in this uh, in instance, an attack on a protocol, you are adhering 100% to the specifications. But when coming up with this protocol, you miss that you need to have the intended recipient of a message. Because otherwise, this message can be replayed and thus used in a replay attack to impersonate uh, the holder. And you miss that because such elements are labeled as optional in the lower level specifications. So you really need to know what you're doing when coming up with the protocol or what we are saying, dear specification authors, please explain security critical controls when you write the specifications and don't just brush over them because people will know what to do. They don't. So you have to make sure that you indeed get the desired security properties from your protocol because you might just miss something and this will break your protocol. And here comes our methodology into play where we say, well, first we need to know what security properties we want. We extract them and formalize them from the SSI principles. We map then elements from the specifications that are being written to a symbolic model of the protocol. We make explicit our trust assumptions based on the conceptual architecture of SSI. And then we can apply formal methods to verify the security properties. So there's a lot of legwork to be done in order to apply the formal methods that we are used to. So how does that look like? Well, again, we want to have an explicit mapping between the wording of the specifications on the right-hand side and a formal symbolic model of a protocol. Why? To pinpoint security critical controls to the responsible specification such that we can point at that specification and say, hey, please be more specific. So this is what our symbolic model looks like. This is a message sequence chart of the applied pi calculus uh, that we use to model the, um, the protocol. And here we can start mapping. We have agent identifiers. OK, these agent identifiers in our symbolic model are DIDs, decentralized identifiers. We transfer claims and signatures about claims. These are interpreted according to the W3 verifiable credential data model. The message sequences, uh, sequences are to be interpreted as defined by the protocol for Hyperledger Aries. And then finally, the outer encryption and any signatures around that are to be interpreted as DIVCOM did messaging. So for every symbol in our model, we map to the corresponding element from the specification, pinpointing where the relevant things are. Then we can talk about formally verifying security, but first we need to think about what the assumptions are. Now I hope this works. So there are in fact five of them, and these are in more detail uh, explained in the paper, but here we just say we make them explicit based on the conceptual architecture, and most importantly, we do allow that honest participants who follow the protocol engage in sessions with dishonest agents that are attackers. So for any role, there are also dishonest participants. Now we can formally verify the security properties that we wanted, secrecy, authentication by agreement, and unlinkability. And indeed, we see, yes, we can have secrecy and agreement, uh, but if you miss single things like a recipient, like a domain, a nonce, a challenge, uh, then you very well make these small mistakes that lead to attacks on your protocol. And you would have missed that if you didn't formally verify your protocol because the specifications won't tell you that in detail. For unlinkability, we see that there 
can be partial unlinkability in the model that we have, uh, but for other uh, for other sub-properties, for example, here we see that the verifier may track a prover. So, in conclusion, the most important insight here, people, please formally verify your protocols. Formally verify what you are trying to implement. Even if you think this is a very good specification, think twice. Because certain elements are currently, at least, marked as optional in the specifications, and they are indeed not optional for authentication protocols or for other stuff. So really think twice. And there is a call to action for specification authors. Please do not fall for this layered thinking, oh yeah, this is their part of the job to do this. No, um, please explain security critical elements even if it's the data model. Please explain what a domain is for, what the recipient is for, what the challenge is for, because people just using this coming from other uh, domains like semantic web, they don't know that. And then also make your assumptions and protocol design decisions explicit, because there you can also see potential vulnerabilities that you would not have seen if you, was, if you weren't explicit about your assumptions. So designers and implementers, please be explicit and formally verify your protocol so you can rest assured about the guaranteed security protocols, uh, properties. And you can use, for example, the methodology presented here. Right? We believe that our methodology, really mapping between specifications and the protocol, making everything explicit that such that you can really go point with your finger and see, ah, this corresponds to everything. And we think that this methodology can be used to also formally evaluate uh, other protocols for other SSR use cases and, again, feedback into the specifications. Thank you so much. This is everything. And I would like to take questions.